You know, if you think about our day-to-day -day lives, we're pretty lucky. We don't worry about things like basic infrastructure. Where we're gonna get gas to heat our food, how we're gonna light our homes. You know, do I have clean water? Do I have fuel and safe transportation to get to work? We take it for granted until it's gone. So we had an experience like that. All of us at Willow Tree woke up to a really intense ice storm. And many of us were without power for a week. For me and my family, I've got two small children. This was mostly an inconvenience, but for others, it was, it was much more serious. Situations like this, when you suddenly have a loss of those resources and that infrastructure can quickly become life or death. We knew that our utility company was taking care of things, but we were really in the dark when it came to information. Not all problems need a digital solution, not by any means. I lead our research practice at Willow Tree, and my team is charged with making sure that any product that we build is truly human-centered. What I love about Two Weeks to Better is that we take some of the most creative and bright people that I've ever worked with, and we clear their schedules, and we allow them to focus really deeply on a human-centered problem for two weeks, free of some of the constraints they might normally have, things like meetings and other obligations. And in that time, they're able to just really dig in and envision a future state where things are better. energy touches everyone's life in some way. So in a sense, this is kind of looking at human beings. And so we need to gradually, as we learn more about the space, bring it down to something that is solvable, actionable, and will provide the most you know, benefit for folks. So we framed up a participatory design session. We convened basically a convenient sample of folks who had some experience with this, which most of us do. We kind of framed the problem for them. Imagine that you are uh, experiencing a power outage. Tell us from beginning to end, you know, pre-storm, during the event, and then after, what's all going through your mind? What are you doing? Really had them think about a solution in their mind that would be an ideal to helping them kind of navigate through these issues and storyboard that out through drawing in small groups. The reason that we staged it that way is it maps really well to a framework that we often use in research and design called the user journey. And what we're really looking for there is a sequence of events, activities, touch points that users have with a particular third party or in, you know, in their environment. We're trying to find opportunity areas where maybe their needs aren't met as well as others. I want to design solutions to real world problems. Maybe a little less flashiness, but a little more impact. Every single group came up with some idea around this idea of community and reaching out to others, kind of neighbors really? who might need help and how they could solicit help from others or give help where it's needed. During a power outage, the number one thing that most users seem to want is a community. They want communication, they want community, they want to feel like there's others with them that they can reach out to. People just think power company, you know, like I pay a bill at the end of the month, right? But what if it's like we got you covered no matter what, even when the lights go out? There's just a massive opportunity in terms of general perception of what it means to be a power company. I imagine there's a through line to how that impacted some of the features and solutions that the team came up with. So did you design for that? So we drew a lot of inspiration from this notion of being able to, first of all, give people a lot of clarity as to what's going on during these events, because that was a huge pain point. While one moment to create awareness for people about an application and get them to try it for the first time is in an unfortunate event, like a power outage or a storm, I think we want to have a journey 
path that brings people into that application around a value proposition that's not tied to difficulty. I think an additional element that the design team was thinking about is these sort of moments in between outages. Having some features that people can come to this solution to all the time, even when their power is working just fine, to learn more about their energy consumption and things like that. We learned that personalization is really key, which may not be surprising. It comes up right. in other contexts as well. Um, but we did learn there are so many variables that impact one's experience of a power outage, depending on, for example, if you're in a rural area or an urban area, yeah. if you have kids or elderly folks. Is your so, water dependent on your electricity? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So lots of examples of that came out. And so, uh, you know, our solution would really uh, rely on having some other, uh, some inputs from the end user about their particular situation so that whatever guidance we proactively offer will mm -hmm. be really tailored to what their needs are. You immerse in the product experience, you immerse in what's already in the marketplace, you start to identify the areas of weakness, areas of strength. We've been doing everything from looking at YouTube videos that linemen have put up about their day-to-day -day life, to reading articles about the regulatory environment, and listening to podcasts about trends and so on, to really get grounded in this space. We talked with a subject matter expert who works for Dominion Energy, one of the top five power companies in the, in the country. We were able to come up with a lot of great great ideas and get those in front of Blake. You have these kernels of data that turn into messages that can be communicated across the, in a variety of different ways, in data visualizations, in emails, in messages to, to customers. That conversation was a good reminder, you know, not to limit ourselves to just mobile apps, to take a look at how the web can impact how a tablet devices in the hands of alignment could be beneficial, and even some tertiary devices, like a, a home device for power monitoring or for managing crises. So we started with this universal problem that I think everyone's had an experience with at one time or another, which is around power outages. With smart meters and just the upgrades to the grid that are happening, that two-way communication at that fundamental like um, electricity delivery level is making all kinds of possibilities really um, actually actionable. And I think we homed in on some you know really key pain points that no one's really addressing. We started this project with Puerto Rico getting hit with a hurricane. This week, uh, Ian hit Florida. So this became more and more topical as we progressed. We kind of focused on sort of three, three bullet points in this process. One was the day-to-day -day usage, conservation, how much power am I using? Is there better ways to track that information? One of the ways we think we can do that is by basically allowing them to set up goals for energy consumption. So what we have is a tracker. So it's your energy usage monitor. You can track it from day to day or month to month. It's reflecting your usage versus a national average. So in order to do that effectively, you can create a profile for your house, you know, indicate square footage or rooms and things like that. So it's more of a one to one comparison. Some of the profile isn't necessarily only your dwelling. It's also who's living there. Does somebody there have a medical need that they're relying upon, you know, power so that that information can be communicated whenever you report a power outage. We really want to improve communication between us as users and the power company. So with like the energy usage monitor, it kind of gives not just us transparency, it also lessens the burden on the power company to answer all of these questions, which I think a lot of people might have. The other part was that power outage scenario, and this is both reporting a power outage, how do I manage you know, both myself and my community, and what can I do to get help or be helpful. Power outages are, are well, not predictable, they, they can be warned. So that's an acquisition opportunity from an app install perspective. That's when people start checking outage maps. You know, if they get an alert on their phone you know, from SMS or from other methodologies that says, you know, there's a possible outage event coming, download our app. You know, get better information, get better news, get better tracking. To be able to send a proactive message to say, hey, we know the power is out in your neighborhood and we're already on top of it not only provides comfort and this sense of well-being and feeling cared for to the end consumer, but for that business, their call log just went down significantly so they can triage calls more effectively. The energy map exists on almost every utility company's website or app today, but we think there's a whole lot 
that we could make better. Bringing together today very siloed experiences that might be two, three, four clicks away from the map. And we brought all that together in a really intelligent way that gives you real insight into not only what's happening around you, but also what's happening in your own context, in your own home. One of the things we found out via research is that it's not just you that matters. This is one of the, the moments of true innovation in this presentation that I really love. You have friends, you have family, you have neighbors, and this idea of like, my neighbor may need something that I have, or I may need something that they have. And none of the current outage maps seem to reflect that sort of nature. So we came up with this concept of, you know, you have uh, friends and family via your contact list, uh, via phone numbers, all of these are connected in the network. You can control who's informed and who's not informed because privacy is still an issue, even as especially during an outage, but letting your neighbor know, you know, or letting your parents know or your kids know that you don't have power, that's, that's valuable. Looking at the outage map, it wasn't immediately clear to me what the colors were standing for. In a, in a time of heightened anxiety, we might want to revisit some of the map styling to make sure that it's very obvious to people what the various states are within the map. One of the things that I learned is just the nuance and complexity of getting power restored. Um, it's not a linear process. So you might think, power's out, fix the line, it's back on, and it really doesn't work that way. There's a whole system of sort of triage and prioritization that feeds into really how uh, crews are deployed and how they can rectify a situation. Love the restoration tracker feature as well. Um, another thing we could do too to help to conserve power is just to pull the API potentially every minute or so. Um, for something like this, for being able to report a status, we don't need uh, updates that will happen every second or every couple of seconds, so a minute should be enough to help to conserve power Power. In, in conjunction with the low power mode, the potentially turning off radios that wouldn't be used on the device itself, and then like also having dark mode on from a device perspective. So one perhaps under leveraged opportunity that came out in the design session was what happens post um, an event like this? Mm -hmm. How can we leverage that moment in time when people are kind of taking stock of, is the food in my refrigerator still good? Did right. my preparations <laughs> you know, work out or not? Um, as a learning experience going forward to help them prepare better for the next time. Yeah. So sort of seeding some sort of a, a, a checklist or uh, just a check-in about how the event went and what could be better. There's a lot of capabilities and every day as, as technology advances, and this is everything from the, the previously mentioned smart meters, uh, Nest and Echo B and other uh, internet of things, uh, thermostats provide even more data. Folding all of that data into something that's easy for a user to look at and have a better understanding of how their home's consuming power, you know, there, there's some interesting capabilities. So here we give users there's two options. Um, the first option is to heat the home in stages. This is a much cheaper option. And option two, you get to heat the home quicker, but we also give the users the note that this is going to be more expensive. In this short two weeks, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg of how you start to deliver on that, but there's really so much more that could be done. I've been very excited about this because I myself want this app. So I think there really like intuitively feels like there's a need here. It became even more timely with Hurricane Ian hitting Florida and hitting the news in the middle of this project. I think it really brought home how important tools like this can be for people who are in a crisis and even preparing for the crisis. Just thinking about the opportunity to help people when they're at arguably their most vulnerable and at a huge scale is one of the reasons that we get out of bed in the morning and do this kind of work. Like it is critically important important that people have that basic need of electricity, safety, and connectedness with their communities. That's incredibly motivating, so even though there will always be more questions to answer and more work to do, just making some steps along the path toward that goal is incredibly inspiring.